Hello friends, welcome. Jason here at Phrygian Frog and this video today is about audio interfaces. I want to continue with the Focusrite 2i2 and to start out, uh, one, I simply just plugged the 2i2 in and if you haven't seen my video introducing the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, please go check it out because I explain the ins and outs of the actual physical product itself. Now we're going to get a little more technical. So the first thing I've done is literally plugged it in via the USB cable and gone to the website. Now I don't actually have to go here because on, I'm on PC here and this is a Windows 10 uh, uh, computer uh, that I um, plugged it in and literally it set it up really quick. It's getting to the point where it's, you know, close to plug and play. Now with that being said, both on Mac and PC there can be issues so it's always good to go and check out drivers. So I went to focusrite.com, go to support, go to downloads, all of the different manufacturers from Focusrite to Presonus to about everybody else in the world has their own um, uh, websites and product support. So this is what I'm doing. Pick your brand, Focusrite, okay? And then pick your type. Now they've got a a slew of different types here. So I'm looking for the Scarlett audio interface and it's the 2i2 right here. Okay. And again, I've got the one of the very first ones and here we go. Now over here, um, it's looking for product range as well. Okay. And I don't need any of that. So I'm just going to come right on down here software and of course user guides now software wise there is what's called an ASIO basically this has to do with a type of driver for USB devices in Windows audio sound in and out driver it is different on Windows than it is on a Mac so just be aware of that as for uh, other drivers if you have other ones you should remove them first so just be aware of that uh, and you download these drivers there's one for Windows and again there is one for Mac so these are going to be the most up-to-date drivers even if you plugged it in and it already installed itself um, the odds could be big that it installed an older version of the driver okay so um, you could do the read more if you'd like to. Then user guides, these are always great. Of course, make sure you choose the right language and hit download. So, uh, for example, I have my Scarlet hooked up. And if I wanted to get the latest driver here, which here it is, I would download it here. Okay. And I would put it in. Now, I want to try this without doing that to show you the plug and play ability of this. But you're going to get the most features and functionality if you go ahead and download and install those drivers and follow directions there. I want to show you how to get to the Scarlet to see what's happened just by plugging it in. If I go down here to the Windows, right click, go Go to settings. In settings, I go to system because sound is there. Now, Windows, if you are um, new to the, their sound settings, they're pretty good. I'm going to go to sound here. One, you have to know your device. So I actually have multiple devices hooked up here. And I do want to show you, and yes, you can hook up multiple audio interfaces and use them all at the same time. And if you don't trust me, I've got a video on that as well. Go check it out. Okay. Back to the Scarlet. This is output device. Now, output means which one do you want to hear sound from? Let's just make it simple. Which one has speakers hooked up to it or headphones or whatever? That's your output device. Now, right now, it's got my other device. I have a Studio Live AR8, which I'll do a series on in the future. Uh, but the, the Scarlet 2i2, I would choose right here. Then I would be able to then hook up speakers, headphones, and hear my output coming out of there. I can also adjust my volume uh, and, of course, do troubleshooting if I have any issues. Now, if I hit device properties, which I just did, I can rename it, and I do highly you know, suggest you rename uh, your uh, outputs. For example, I would call this one you know, Focusrite 2i2 output or something like that. 
Um, spatial sound wines, I recommend turning that off. I've actually had some issues on both PC and Mac with those kinds of things. So input wise, now I'm going to skip over this for just a second. Your inputs are the things you literally plug in to the interface. So for example, microphone right here. Okay. Oh, there it is. I have a microphone plugged in. You see it? Testing, testing, check one, two, I'll turn it up and test check whoop too much test okay so right there i uh, have tested my mic it's just a sm57 made by sure uh they're wonderful mics they um uh, i gig with them all the time and i record with them all the time and it i i literally plugged it in i'm setting the gain and we'll get into gain staging in the future uh and there'll be a video on gain staging probably more than one it's that important the point is I choose my device, and I've got my uh, whatever, microphones, keyboards, guitars, basses plugged into. These are my inputs. So you got to know your ins and your outs. <laughs> All right. Now, the advanced stuff has to do with app volume, but let me go back to manage sound devices because what this does is it gives you a whole list of everything you have hooked up. Okay, here's the Scarlet 2i2 that we're talking about there. Okay, and I could test it or disable it if I want. And it's not a bad idea to disable. For example, I have a few screens here that are connected. I don't want to be using the audio from those screens, so I can actually disable those if I wanted to. Okay, the input devices, same thing. If I want to test some of these, I can. The microphone is the one that uh, I was just testing earlier. I do not want to disable it. Now, this is important to know because, again, yes, you can use multiple interfaces. I do it all the time. Okay, and then when you get to manage sound devices here, this is the same menu. Okay. All right. Let me flip back here and go very bottom. If you don't know, this is something that remember using this in a different way. It's app volume and device preferences. You used to go down to a little icon, you pull it up and there was this mixer view. Well, this is like the same thing. And let's see, I wonder if I could still get on my other screen to the old way of doing things. And I'm trying to remember how right now. Uh, I did. Okay. It looks like this. Okay. So here is the, you can still get to it by right clicking on your little speaker icon and going to the volume mixer. And, uh, that's one way of doing it. And that's fine. I find this way to be a little more specific and here's why, um, this, uh, menu over here just gives you uh, one view of everything, whereas you're able to hear, see both the outputs and the inputs for each software that I'm running. For example, I am running system sounds. I am running a screen capturing software. I am running Firefox and I'm running um, Google. So each one of these, I can actually choose the input and output device on. There they all are again. And then I could set the volumes of the different things as well. Okay, so that's a very important to know um, because Windows and Mac are very similar in these aspects. They just uh, have a way of viewing these things in a different way. I do like this new way, of course, because you could see the outputs and inputs of each device right away. Now, when I say device, um, the devices are here, output and input, whereas the apps that you're running are all over here. This is how you can literally share your uh, same device or audio interface for all of your apps. Or if you don't want to share, which, you know, I get pretty complicated with some of my setups, maybe I just want to run certain things off of one of my interfaces, say all of my Firefox stuff, I want to run sound through a certain interface, but then all of my recording screen capture and I want to run through something else. Well, I could set all of that up right here. So again, want to show that very important feature. Now, this kind of thing, setting up your ins and outs in Windows, and I will have another video for Mac, is very important to understand. So once again, uh, how did I get up to all this? Let's just do a quick review. One, go to the website and download an update 
or an updated driver for your specific device. And make sure you do look up the specific device. The odds are that driver is going to um, work very well and it's going to be updated typically to the most recent updates on either Windows or Mac, okay? And yes, there will be typically drivers for both. So if I hit download, it would go to my downloads and then I'd set it up, okay? Now, we're gonna do that in the future. My point is this, very important step, don't forget if you buy an interface in the store, as soon as you get it home, if it came with a CD or, or any kind of drivers whatsoever, the minute you get home, they're out of date, okay? Because that's how fast technology moves, especially in the audio world. So most of the time they don't even come with CDs anyway. Um, go to the website and get the most updated driver. All right, so that's the big step. And then right click, go to your settings, dive into your system sound. This is for Windows again, and get, get to understand your output. That's what your speakers, your headphone is hooked up to, okay? And then your input devices. So output devices, input devices. Don't be afraid to click all these things or to test your microphones. <laughs> there you go. And to um, manage all your sound devices. And then finally, hop into your individual apps that you have open at the moment. Maybe you want to have quite a complex setup. And if you get into podcasting, that kind of thing, then you really you know, do need to uh, get in there and do those kinds of setups. There is a master volume, too. So there has to be always one main audio interface or device. And then everybody else can be other devices. or dev Now, this one I cannot change. Notice when I tried it to, where it says system sounds, because that's what this is right here. Where Whereas if I wanted to um, go to the go to the OBS app, I can change that because I do have other devices hooked up. All right, hope you've learned something here, and stay tuned as we're going to have more exciting videos when it comes to getting your audio interfaces to work with your computers. Hey, if you like my videos, please hit like and subscribe. If you have comments or suggestions for future videos, let me know that too. Thank you very much, and go make some music.